Hey everyone, Rick with Rick's 1 through 5th scale models with a product review. Today I'm going to be looking at the Tacom 135th scale Leopard 1A5 in either a German version or the Canadian C2 version. Uh, really impressed with the kit so far, but let's take a look at the actual kit itself and see what we got. So initially looking at the instructions itself, you're going to have a two-sided instruction sheet. On this side you're going to have the Canadian version, and if you flip it over, you're going to have the German version. So when you go through the instructions, it has a little bit of an explanation of the vehicle history, and then you uh, go into the actual parts of the instructions, and then they detail. They give you a nice spruce sheet uh, layout, and then they, as like most kits do, you start with the lower chassis, doing the bogey wheels and suspension and parts like that. Uh, this vehicle does have the flexible suspension, which is nice if you're doing a diorama. If you're not, then you may want to glue it, depending on your uh, desire. But um, I've done some other tacking kits with this, and it works out really nice. Continuing on, you've got, like I said, your... Uh, lower chassis, parts of the details of the exterior of the body, uh, fenders, hatches, different components. Working your way through, continuing on adding all the extra gear, side skirting, and uh, the armor plating and those parts. This is a pretty nice little explanation of how you paint the details. Adding in some of the final parts of the lower chassis and then combining the two. This model does have the uh, Tacom, what a lot of people call rubber band tracks, which I like. Uh, basically, you have the track section, which is in one solid piece, and then the connectors you add in, and they're a uh, softer plastic polyurethane, something along those lines. It um, has a little bit of flex to it, so uh, it makes assembly no glue needed is kind of time consuming but it works out real nice then you get into building the turret here uh, all the different aspects you can do hatches open or closed depending on what you want to do no interior in this vehicle but uh, you can put uh, figures in it etc the other thing you'll notice with this kit is because of this uh, mantle or over the uh, main gun the barrel does not move it is fixed in one position Going on finishing, adding on the supplemental armor, smoke discharges, parts like that. Pretty uh, simple, straightforward. And then this extra little figure you can add on and uh, putting the turret on. And that's pretty much completed with the building aspect of the vehicle. Then they go into the uh, paint scheme of the uh, vehicle. You can either do a, a Kosovo version, which is a olive drab or olive green. And then, or you can do your standard NATO tricolor black, brown, and green pattern here. Then go through the other side. Canadian version, very similar instructions, but the turret does have um, some extra parts on it. So uh, there's some added parts to do there. All this is all the same until you get to the turret where you uh, have a different machine gun. And then the uh, back end is a little different along with the uh, sighting mechanism has a little mantle over it for uh, some kind of a sunshade, something along those lines. Same aspect going through. And then you get into your paint scheme. What's interesting about this is the lower part of the body is in the NATO tricolor, but the turret's green. So I thought that was interesting in looking at some pictures. I found pictures that showed the same thing. So. It's an interesting look. Okay, so looking at the sprue sheet, uh, the first sprue sheet will be this extra little figure they add, which is a Kosovo sniper type thing. I've heard some people talk about the model and who it may be. Um, and that's really not important. The kit itself, uh, really nice detail. You've got your Russian sniper rifle here, either loose or he's holding it. Uh, the face detail is uh, pretty decent. Um, he has a pistol and the arms, etc. Nothing real special. Uh, decent looking kit though, as far as the uh, detail of the figure. Not a lot of cleanup work. Not a lot of options with him. Pretty much he's going to be how he is, but uh, nice little aspects of that to the stash for future builds. 
This sprue sheet will be of the uh, added supplemental to the turret. You can see the uh, detail here on the supplemental armor on the side. You're going to have the German version and the Canadian version, uh, depending on which one you do, along with uh, some of the MG machine guns, the Canadian looks like here. Uh, no, that's actually an MG. Um, some of the uh, baskets, parts, things like that, um, all here along with your uh, handrails, guards, and different components. Looking at the back side, same thing, detail. Uh, you have your uh, ice cleats here, uh, smoke dischargers, antennas, those parts. This sprue sheet is going to be your turret. You can see you have your main top and bottom of the turret, your gun mantle, the uh, cover, um, your hatches, some extra uh, suspension bars for the uh, suspension system, your barrel, um, some tools, driver's hatch, the uh, guard around the uh, gunners um, or the loaders turret component. There's two of them here. Both of them have uh, a mounting for the MG. Uh, I'll be interested to look at the instructions and see how that works. Um, your different hatches, like I said, front suspension, uh, and then some of the boxes that go on the vehicle. The nice thing about the turret is um, the weld lines are uh, pretty accurate looking and comparing this to an actual real Leopard, um, they look real sharp. Also your uh, loading hatch here, uh, you can make that open or close. That's a real nice aspect. Um, unfortunately, though, with this kit, you're going to have an armor there. But if you look down, you're going to see the hatch there. Okay, this sprue sheet's going to be more parts of the turret and parts of the lower chassis. You can see uh, the uh, box that goes on the back of the turret here, along with your uh, parts of your lower chassis around the engine area. Looking at the other side of this. Um, Decent detail, looks nice, no flashing issues, uh, every part looks nice and square and good to go. The uh, Canadian MG machine gun here, which is really nice detailed, uh, looks real sharp, along with some uh, fuel tanks, or uh, water tanks actually here. Okay, next sprue sheet, you're going to see your side skirt protection, part of your gun mantle, part of the turret here, along with along the tools that go on the uh, lower part of the uh, vehicle. Really good detail here, no extra flashing, and not a lot of extra little screw pieces to uh, remove. Cleanup should be straightforward. No real lines or anything. Real sharp looking. I noticed this here part actually is broke, but the part itself isn't, doesn't have any issues with it. So no big deal there. So you're gonna have two of this sprue sheet. This will have your bogey wheel, some of the uh, suspension system, uh, tow cables, smoke dischargers, more water tanks, uh, drive sprockets, um, different return sprockets, um, some extra uh, track pieces here. Uh, everything looks pretty accurate, uh, real good detail inside here as far as your uh, bolts. Um, and like I said, the bogey wheel detail, real sharp looking. Looking at the back side, uh, pretty straightforward, nothing real major. Um, these have the little part you put inside here so that you can uh, remove these during the uh, building of it and they just clip on the outside here. Next part's going to have lots of little bitty bitty parts. These are all parts for the turret uh, adding the supplemental armor, uh, different grab iron rails and then uh, different drive sprockets here along with some smoke discharges and these are all part of the mounting for this uh, supplemental armor that goes on the turret. You also have your review mirrors here Backside, most of this gets glued to the vehicle so you won't see most of it, but it's uh, still a nice looking detail. So you're going to have three of these. These are your tracks. These are the uh, sections. This is uh, each track link you cut out. You have your guide here that goes in between each side, and then you have the little grommet that goes on the end. Uh, that's the flexible plastic, like a styrene, or, or not styrene, but a polyurethane, some vinyl or something that goes there um, that holds it all together. has a little bit of flex. Um, there are some extra track links here. When you count them out, you'll have 
some extra because um, this is a pretty fragile part right in the center here and it looks like it'll break pretty easy but uh, I've done a few of these they go together really nice looking at the side that goes on the ground the rubber uh, looks real sharp also this is going to be your little connectors for the uh, tracks themselves um, these are two-sided so when you're assembling this part you got to make sure that you put it together right because there's a inside and an outside um, you can see where the bolt is that usually goes on the outside of the track um, so when you're assembling them you got to make sure you put them together the right way or it'll look kind of funny so here you're going to see you're going to have your tow cable here which is a string um, you're going to have the little parts that go inside the bogey wheels to attach them your uh, clear plastic for your headlights a PE sheet which has uh, different parts that go on at different locations of the vehicle uh, really sharp looking there and then your decals you're going to have your Canadian um, some decals here uh, different countries here KOVR uh, then your German here depending on which country you want to go with and uh, which options. Uh, decals are really uh, nice looking, real clear. Uh, they look accurate size and uh, they are really well uh, printed, so uh, real high quality. Last part's gonna be your lower body. It comes in two sections. You've got obviously the bottom and the top. Uh, real good clear detail here. Real sharp, lots of access points um, for connecting all the different parts on. Uh, they've got a, the non-skid plating on here which looks pretty accurate real sharp looking uh, lower part you're gonna have your uh, suspension there which is just kind of uh, cast onto it not real hard to assemble most of it's not really seeable anyway but um, the detail is still nice there and then you cut the back end of the vehicle here um, parts go together really clear real clean Not real difficult pretty straightforward simple installation they have some extra supports here which you'll pull out um, during the assembly that's to keep it obviously from warping uh, pretty solid it doesn't want to flex it looks accurate and uh, well made okay so in conclusion uh, I would say it's a really nice sharp kit Tacom did a good job you have two good options with the build um, and obviously doing the Canadian version or the German version along with uh, some of the other countries that use this variant of the Leopard 1A5. Uh, really nice detail. I didn't see any issues that jumped right out. Uh, assembly looks pretty straightforward. It uh, lends itself to a lot of different options as far as detailing and weathering. Uh, I can make it a really nice sharp kit with the adjustable suspension system. If you put it on a diorama, you can make a nice effect there. Like I initially said, the only criticism I would have would be the barrel doesn't have any options. It's at one angle. Um, I'm sure uh, with a little bit of creativity, uh, somebody might be able to make it work a little differently. Uh, but it's not something that uh, lends itself to a simple cure. Um, anyway, that's my review. Definitely, like I said, a uh, highly recommended model. I like it. I'm looking forward to this build in the future. Uh, any comments or questions, please reach out to me. Uh, catch me on Facebook, email me, or just put a comment in the uh, text below. Um, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. Uh, more videos coming soon, everyone. Take care and uh, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.